Beasley's getting himself a victory. He comes out with his feet moving. Parker on his toes now. Beasley trying First to push time him in the across fight. the ring. See how long he can dance. Beasley picked up his tempo to follow, but not as much. Parker can't do anything with the left jab because Beasley has established range with his reach. His left is extremely sluggish. Right to the body. So we look to the corner of Lonnie Beasley, his manager Jackie Callen looking on. She's already got a world champion in her stable with James Tony. She's hoping Beasley will move up through the ranks. Got a ways to go yet. Working against Nick Parker. You're in the red trunks with his back to you. Good left jab, stiff left jab. Four of them in a row by Beasley. A little more than halfway through round five. Oh, nice jab. Boy, I like it. He sticks it. Quick. Misses with a left hook and Beasley misses with a right count. I'll tell you what, if he can get on the heavy bag and make that right hand a weapon rather than just kind of ancillary to the left jab, something that really comes in with authority behind it, now you got a fighter on your hands. Because he's got the quickness to deliver yeah. and get it there. Yeah, well, it gets there and it's, it doesn't have enough on it when it does. The punching power is such efficient. I think they, uh, they have some validity in what we've seen. He's quick enough. The jab does a whole lot of work defensively and offensively for him. And if you get, if you can figure out how to control the right, turn it over at the end, get a little more power behind it. Yeah, he hit him with the right hand in the last sequence. It seemed to be flush. Parker was going away, but it never bothered Parker a bit. Beasley trying to pick some things up. Left is short, and the right caught of the elbow as Parker backs out of the way. The right's the slowest of the two for whatever reason. Was he staggered by something there? It looked like he got hit on the top of the head by the left hand. He kind of staggered back, but I think he just lost his balance. We'll be back and take a look at the final round of this one right after we pause for these words. Fifth. Beasley did get one. That was pretty flush. Just a chopping left hand, almost a semi-hook, Jim, right across the ear. Yeah. That did stagger him back from our vantage point, looking through the ropes opposite that picture. We thought it was a jab, and now here comes Parker. He knows what he's got to do. Does he have the energy to carry on this kind of a flurry for any length of time? He started the fifth dancing and moving, but slowed down quickly. Gets a couple of shots in on Beasley. He needs a knockout. He's down five points after five rounds in my mind, anyway. Wild left hand, and Beasley easily dances out of the way. Beasley continues to pound away. He's got Parker against the rope. Parker now looking to hold on. Yeah, I think his flurry's done. Yep, I think back. he had about 20 seconds left in him, and he came out and spent that in the first 20 seconds of the sixth and final round, and now Beasley's going to work. He might have him in a bit of trouble, accumulation of blows once again, and I think that uh, Parker... If he gets hit good and solid and finds himself in trouble, they just go down. A little less than two minutes, he's got to survive. Right hand by Beasley, again, driving Parker back to the ropes. He's hit with everything, and if the question about his power is a good one, and uh, they've got to go to work with him in the gym. Probably the most single most effective punch was that left we showed just a moment ago and it was kind of a chopping job the right hand is slow and developing more often than not with him jim he reaches way back for it he doesn't have that that quick clicking quality with the power at the end but again the accumulation of blows he's carrying the the pace although it's become a bit of a leaning match the crowd getting pretty excited they'd like to see the knockout Beasley has a half a dozen in his 10 victories.
Parker, I think, just at this point, looking to survive and go the distance. Because Beasley's got it one, and Parker's flurry to make something happen was done after about 15, 20 seconds of the sixth round. And he's got less than a minute to go. Beasley on his toes, working the left jab. Looks like he won't make any mistakes. Backhand slap. All right. He misses with the left cross, so he just slaps him back. Which tells you how much uh, Parker slowed down. Well, he hadn't thrown a punch in the last minute. Oh. And he grabbed, well, there's the only punch he's thrown. Just a little shot, right hand behind around the elbow. And it was a oh, and big it is. left uppercut. Down goes Parker. Just 17 seconds left to go in the round. And it was that left hand he brings up from his hip. It got through and nailed Nick Parker. And he goes down. It will be a knockdown, but it will not go down as a knockout because the bell will sound ending the fight as Lonnie Beasley will easily get the victory over Nick Parker in the junior middleweight division. And I want you to know that left hand that he starts down by his knees. He tried to throw it four or five times. He got one in in the first round. And then here in the last round, he got one in and it took Parker down. Well, I think it developed a little differently than the first. You see it comes off of Flurry and the combination they're working now. He reaches down and up quickly as opposed to the first round when he kind of stuck his chin out and held his arm down by the floor and then brought it up. This just was part of the flow. And it, again, it emphasizes something of what we were talking about earlier, Jim. The jab is very effective. Check jab is very effective as a defensive weapon. All of his offense really comes from the left side. If he develops the right and gets, becomes a more balanced fighter, quickens his feet, and gets a little more ring generalships in, in terms of cutting the ring and that sort of thing, and it, those things will come with experience, he could have a pretty promising future. That has to happen relatively quickly. He's 26 years old, but he's also 11 and 1. Well, the fight went to the judges, and it is a 10-point must system in the state of Michigan, and the judges have made their decision. Let's go to Wally Jackson for the official decision. And our judges, Rose Graybell, Chip Acey, and John Parrish all scored it 60-53. Winner by unanimous decision, Lonnie Honeybee Beasley. A shout-out on all the cards, 60-53. And no big surprise there as Lonnie Beasley gets the victory. He now raises his record to 11 and 1. A good test for Lonnie Beasley. Nick Parker hung in there with him. And uh, boy, like you said, Chris, he goes to work on that right hand, gets some power. He could uh, be a pretty stiff two handed puncher. Yep, yep, yep. Good work. Back with more boxing from the Palace.